Welcome to Wednesday in the Word. I'm delighted to welcome you once again to my home and to my office for this week's study in the Word of God. It is almost impossible to believe that we are approaching the end of October. I know that I've said many times that the year is passing by all too fast, but certainly this month has sped by. It is certainly a change in the weather. Last Tuesday when I was recording this, it was in the 80s. And today, the high is supposed to be 68, but the low this morning was 42. So there is certainly a fall feeling in the air. I love fall. It's a favorite time of mine. I love everything about fall except for the raking of the leaves. And uh, the Lord has been very gracious. Um, we have a tree that uh, takes almost two months to drop its leaves. But God has, for the last several days, sent a good stiff wind and has blown all of my leaves out into the road and to the yards of my neighbors. So, in all things, give thanks unto the Lord. I know my neighbors are not rejoicing in my leaves. But as we go to God in prayer, we lift your needs before God. Uh, there are some of our people that have been in the hospital. Um, there has been a, a number of people that have had COVID and are recovering from COVID, and we lift the needs before God. I pray that you are preparing your heart to receive on a daily basis His Word. Uh, I think of the scripture where David said, Your word have I hidden in my heart, that I may not sin against God. And one of uh, your daily disciplines, I hope, that you are practicing is the daily reading of God's Word, spending time with God, and meditating upon His Word, and going to God in prayer. As you do, you will find yourself growing in His grace and in His knowledge. So let us go to God in prayer and give thanks to Him. Father, we thank you for the day that you have once again given to us. You had been gracious to us, and we praise your name for every good and every special gift that comes from above. We thank you for life, and we thank you for our families. And we pray for our families and that our families would be drawn closer to you, that you would deal with our family members, reveal yourself to them, open their eyes that they may see the glory of God, and understand that you are the very special revelation of the Father, our Lord Jesus, and that you have come to show us the fullness of grace and truth. I pray that you would be with all of those that are in need, whether it be physical or spiritual, or whether it be emotional. God, may you mentor uh, our people that they would grow in your word, and may you supply their need. Bless the word, O Lord, as we are about to look into the word of God. May it become alive. May it become real to us. Oh, we ask it in Jesus' name, and amen. Let me invite you to be with us this coming Sunday, uh, either for the 9 o'clock or the 11 o'clock service. I always look forward, especially in the 9 o'clock service, of uh, greeting people and welcoming them uh, to the house of God. And then at 1020, every Sunday in the conference room of the church, I am conducting a Bible class. And so I invite you to come and to be with us in the Bible class. Now, today I want to do something that, uh, as far as I know, I have never done before. I'm taking a sermon that I preached 
last November the 22nd at Spring Valley, and I want to turn it into a Bible study. And there's a reason that I want to take this uh, as a Bible study. First of all, it is coming from the book of Zechariah. And let me just tell you where Zechariah is. It is next to the last book of the Old Testament. So if you turn to the very last book of the Old Testament, the book of Malachi, go back one and you have reached the book of Zechariah. It is a book that falls into what we call the Minor Prophets. There are 12 of the Minor Prophets. Minor, not in the sense that their messages are minor, but minor in the sense they are not long, uh, such as the major prophets of Isaiah, Jeremiah, or the book of Ezekiel. There are only 14 chapters into the book of Zechariah. And when I preached the sermon almost a year ago, I entitled it, uh, Encouraging Word in Discouraging Times. Now, I have almost a year to look back from the time that I delivered this message. And we have been through so very, very much. Over 18 months of the pandemic, and it has taken a toll on all of our families. It has taken a toll on the world. It has taken a, a toll as far as the United States. Well over 700,000 people have died in the United States as a result of the COVID-19 virus. The economy was shut down. We had to shelter in place. And because of this, it brought about a lot of fear. It brought about a lot of discouragement and anxiety. Uh, people not being able to visit family members, not being able to go out and have a social life, not being able to go to a restaurant and having a meal, not being able to visit your loved ones. And it took a real toll mentally on many of our people. And as a pastor, some of you have experienced death in your families. And I have been with some of you as you have gone through the sorrows of losing a loved one in your family. Uh, some of you have struggled in the paying of your bills. Some of you have struggled in the sense of uh, not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring. As I am uh, teaching this word today, hopefully we are closer to the end of this virus than we've ever been before. But to be honest, we don't know what the future holds. We don't know what's around the corner. I can only pray that uh, tomorrow is going to be a better day than today has been. Um, but regardless of what you have gone through, I want to direct your attention to the book of Isaiah. And I want to use this as a book of encouragement to you. Let me give you some background as it relates to uh, the book of uh, Zechariah. First of all, the word Zechariah means the Lord remembers. And I want you to stop. I want you to ponder. I want you to think. The Lord remembers. The Lord remembers you. The Lord knows your name. He knows your address. He knows all of your personal information. He knows you more intimately than you know yourself. Now, in the context of the book of Zechariah, what the Lord is saying, God remembers his people. He remembers his people, Israel. Because let me remind you what Israel had gone through. They had gone through the exile for 70 years 
they had been in exile to the Babylonians. And now, as Zechariah is writing to them, they have received their freedom. The Medo-Persians have overthrown the Babylonians, and the children of Israel have gone back to their homeland only to find the city of Jerusalem and rubble. The walls have been torn down. The temple has been dismantled. It has been burned to the ground. So they're going back to disaster. They're going back to a city in rubble. But God says, I remember you. You are the people that I called. You are the people that had your beginning with Abraham. And I remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I remember the 12 tribes. I remember how you were slaves to Egypt and how I brought you from the land of slavery and brought you into a land and gave it to you and settled you in this land. I remember your hardships. I remember the joys that you had. I remember when you went into captivity to the Babylonians and people were requiring of you to sing one of the songs of the Lord. And in Psalm 137, you said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And you hung your harps on the willow trees. And basically, you have forgotten the song of the Lord. So I remember, I remember that you had been in exile and how I have brought you through those uh, last 70 years. And now the difficulties that you are facing as you are about to rebuild your city. And you're starting with the very heart of what you're about. You're starting with the altar of the temple. That's the first thing you rebuild, and the walls will come later. Now, let me remind you a little bit about Zechariah. He is a contemporary of Haggai, and Zechariah begins his ministry in 520 B.C., 520 years before the birth of Christ, and he will continue until 475 B.C. So for a period of 45 years, Zechariah is going to be prophesying. He's going to have a profound effect upon the restoration of the children of Israel. Now, let's put all of this in context. While Isaiah prophesies prior to the exile, and if you read the book of Isaiah, he is delivering his messages before the children of Israel go into exile. Jeremiah prophesies while the exile is taking place. So if you read the book of uh, Jeremiah, you will find that they are in the process of going into exile. And Ezekiel prophesies from the exile. Ezekiel is actually living in the land of Babylon, and he is prophesying from the land of Babylon. Zechariah, who was in exile, is going to be freed. He's going to be freed after the Medo-Persians take over from Babylon, and uh, he's going to be part of the restoration of Judea and of the city of Jerusalem, and particularly the rebuilding of the temple. Now, Zechariah is a very interesting person because he is a priest that is from the tribe of Levi, and he is a prophet, and his main purpose is to encourage and motivate the people to complete the rebuilding of the temple. So imagine 
these people that are returning from exile mentally physically emotionally they are exhausted there is little faith faith that is in these people they are facing opposition and then you have Zechariah who comes along and he begins to prophesy and he says I'm going to give you a word of encouragement so the theme of Zechariah is encouragement so let's learn some lessons from Zechariah let's listen to some encouragement that comes from the book of Zechariah number one don't allow your past to shape your future I'm speaking to people and some of you have had uh, a horrible past God has brought you through some very difficult times in your life and uh, your past is almost like a bad dream but God has brought you through it and you have come this far by faith uh, in the case of the children of Israel they have been captive to the Babylonians and then for a short while uh, to the Persians but I want you to know what he is saying Zechariah is saying to the children of Israel while you have been a captive for 70 years don't have the mentality of a captive that's so important while you have been saved from sin don't have the mentality of a sinner while you have been saved from difficulty don't have the mentality that life is difficult and you're always going to have difficulty be an overcomer see where God has brought you from in the victory he knows in the case of Zechariah he knows who he is he is a priest and he is a prophet he is a man of God know who you are you were saved by the grace of God you are not who you used to be and at this moment you are not who you're going to be by God's grace number two realize the gifting and the talents that you have I am speaking to individuals that I know that you have gifting and talents from God the devil wants to make you think that you don't have any gifting that you have no talents and that you of no use to God let me give you a phrase the English is not good but the message certainly is God don't make no junk now while I said the English is not good the message is profound when God created you he did not make a mistake he made you as his child and you are loved of the father and he has created you with latent gifts and talents some of those you're already been using for the Lord but discouragement can come along and you can be made to think well I really don't have that much gift and I don't have that much talent but God has given you great gifts and great talents you are one of a kind and never forget that and what I want to encourage you to do begin to exercise your gifts and your talents for the Lord now never forget that you are fearfully and wonderfully made and the potential in you is ready to be tapped for the glory of God number three <clears throat> regardless of your sin the Lord has provided a cleansing 
and he has provided forgiveness. That is one of the great lessons that comes from the book of Zechariah. Go with me to chapter 1 and verse 2. And here is the word of the Lord <clears throat> to Zechariah and to Israel. Return to me, declares the Lord Almighty, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. And then I want you to go with me to chapter 3 of the book of Zechariah. And I want to read the first five verses. And at the very beginning of this chapter, you will find the caption, Clean Garments for the High Priest. And you will find the High Priest Joshua coming before the Lord, and you will find the devil accusing him. And the devil is always an accuser. But listen very closely to the scripture. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. And notice, and Satan standing at his right side to accuse him. The devil is an accuser of the brethren. The devil is not going to build you up. The devil is going to tear you down. The devil is not going to tell you how good you are. He's going to tell you how bad you are. And so the devil is standing there to accuse Joshua, the high priest. But I love the next part of this verse. The Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. If you can hear those words ring in your heart, the Lord rebuke you. Satan, the Lord has chosen Jerusalem. Rebuke you. Is not this man a burning stick snatched from the fire? And God is saying to Joshua, you had been almost consumed, but in the nick of time, I snatched you from the fire. And I'm speaking to some of you. The devil had tried to destroy your life. But in the nick of time, God snatched you as a burning stick from the fire. Now notice in verse 3, Joshua was dressed in filthy clothes as he stood before the angel. And the angel said to those who were standing before him, take off his filthy clothes. Oh, how wonderful. We stand before God in the filth of our sin. And God said, I had made provision for your cleansing. Take off the filthy garment. Take off the filthy clothes. Then he said to Joshua, see, I have taken away your sin. And I will put rich garments on you. Hear the word of God. God has taken away your sin. Your sin is into the depth of the sea. Your sin is removed as far as the east is from the west. Your sin is behind the back of the Lord, never to be remembered again. Then I said, put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him while the angel stood by. And that is the picture of what the Lord does for you. You come to him. We came to him. As it were with our sin. And the stain of our sin. And God said I had made provision. For your cleansing. Now. The Lord not only wants to cleanse you. But the Lord wants to crown you. Number four. Do you realize who you are? You are a prince and a princess with the Lord. You are a king's kid. Listen to the word of the Lord in Zechariah chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. The word of the Lord came to me. Take silver and gold from the exiles, Heldei, Tobijah, and Jedediah, 
that have arrived from Babylon. Go the same day to the house of Joshua, the son of Zephaniah, and take the silver and the gold, and notice, make a crown, and set it on the head of the high priest Joshua, son of Jehoshadak. Do you see what is happening here? God has not only made you a priest unto the Lord, but he has made you a prince and a princess unto the Lord. And it's beautiful as God sees you. The devil wants you to see yourself as a nobody, as a pauper, as a beggar tossed along the roadside of life. But God says, I have taken you and I have placed you in a position of honor. You are a king's kin. Number five, what you need to know is that what you cannot accomplish by yourself, God can accomplish through you and by his spirit. And some of you that are listening are saying, Pastor, what can I do? I have no power, I have no ability, I have no strength. I can't accomplish anything for the Lord. Listen to the word of the Lord in Zechariah 4, 6. And I love this. It's one of my favorite verses of Scripture. So he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. You see, the Lord had sent Zechariah back to Jerusalem to inspire the people, to encourage the people, to help the people rebuild the temple. Can you imagine the tremendous task before them, a building of a temple. And Zechariah, notice I said, who am I? What am I? How can I do this? And God came to him and he said, it's not by might, nor is it by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. What you and I cannot do in and by ourselves, God gives us the empowerment. He gives us the strength to perform. We can be like Moses and we throw up our excuses and we say, God, look at me. See my impediments and what I cannot do. And God says, little is much when God is in it. Through my spirit, by my spirit, you can accomplish great things for the Lord. Do not despise the day of small things. You see, they could not rebuild the temple by themselves with their strength, with their abilities. But the Lord would enable them by his spirit. And if you read you will find that is exactly what they did. They accomplished the task that God had placed before them. Next, never forget God is sovereign and he has provided a savior. He loved you so much that he sent his one and only son into the world. And I've often said this, if you had been the only person, I believe that God would have still provided a savior. One of the things that is so fascinating about the book of Zechariah, in these 14 chapters, it is the most messianic book of the entire Old Testament. You will never find a book that is filled with more prophecies as it relates to the coming of the Messiah, written over 400 years before the birth of the Messiah. Zechariah prophesies that the Messiah will come from the Lord's servant, the branch. In chapter 3 and verse 8, in chapter 6 and verse 12, he comes as the man. 
the branch. In chapter 6, verse 13, he comes as both king and priest. You go to the 11th chapter, verse 4 through 11, and you will see that the Messiah is the true shepherd. In chapter 11, verse 12 through 13, Christ's betrayal for 30 pieces of silver is prophesied by the prophet Zechariah. In chapter 12, verse 10, his crucifixion is foretold. In chapter 13, verse 7, his sufferings are mentioned. In chapter 14, verse 4, the second advent. In chapter 9, verse 9, you find Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. I love chapter 12, verse 10, because it prophesies Jesus being pierced. And here's what it says. They will look on the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child. So you see, God guides human history, and as a result, he has provided an only Savior. And what I can tell you, at this very moment, God is guiding and directing and orchestrating your life. That is how much he loves you. Then notice, God will take care of you. I don't care what's going on in the world today. There's little good news if you turn the TV on, if you go to mass media, you will find that there is little good news in the world. It seems as though that the whole world is going to hell in a handbasket. But I want to tell you that God will take care of you. There's a wonderful scripture that comes from the hand of David. He said, I have been young and now I am old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging bread. God will take care of you. And uh, Zechariah chapter 10, verse 3, For the Lord Almighty will care for his flock, the house of Judah. In chapter 10, verse 6, I will restore them because I have compassion on them. Chapter 10, verse 11, they will pass through the sea of trouble. The surging sea will be subdued. It doesn't mean that we're not going to face hardship, but regardless, God will take care of you. Can you look back on your life and recount the times when God has been with you? And if it had not been for God, it could have been all over. But God cared for you in such a divine way. In chapter 10 and verse 12, I will strengthen them in the Lord, and in his name they will walk, declares the Lord. And I want to take this ancient scripture and speak to you that God will strengthen you right now in the Lord. In his name you will walk, declares the Lord. Last of all, remember, no matter how bleak the past, there's a glorious future. As I am bringing this lesson to you from my office, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but one thing I do know, one day, Jesus is coming. One day, he will come on the clouds of glory. One day, the trumpet of the Lord will sound the voice of the archangel. According to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. One day, the graves will burst open 
and the dead in Christ will rise. And then we that are alive and remaining who know Jesus will be caught up to be with him in the clouds of glory. One day, sin will be no more. One day, there is a glorious future where the Lord will restore paradise and we will reign with him. So there's a glorious future. You get the time. Read Zechariah, the 14th chapter, and the theme of the chapter is simply this. The Lord comes and he reigns. And one day the Lord shall come and he shall reign. A reoccurring theme in this 14th chapter is on that day. Play that over and over again in your mind. On that day. In the New International Version, this phrase is used seven times in the 14th chapter. On that day. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And as I close this lesson, what a day that will be when our Jesus we shall see. I bring you this word as a word of encouragement. Don't be discouraged. But be encouraged because God is for you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? May God bless you until next week.